Topping your news first tonight, former Archbishop Anthony Aperon may have a chance at overturning a guilty verdict against him by a Vatican tribunal. A canon law expert says it's what the Vatican refers to as second instance, where the very merits of the case can be re-examined. This contradicts what most have believed, that only the procedure of the canonical trial can be appealed. Even before the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith reached a judgment in the canonical trial of former Guam Archbishop Anthony Aperon, most experts said the penalty or judgment is not appealable. Only the process can be challenged. It's what Archbishop Michael Burns said in a previous press conference that he understood as well. Does this mean that the, the actual verdict, the sentence itself, is unappealable? Um, again, that I'm, that's my understanding, but I, I, I can't say that with great authority. But we spoke with an expert in canon law, Monsignor Frederick Easton, a judicial vicar with the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, who was also the former president of the U.S. Canon Law Society. He says Guam has been misinformed. Aperon can file an appeal on the merits of the case. In fact, he says, it's happened before. Um, uh, they've been saying that the judgment, well, the findings at least on the merits are final. The only thing that he can appeal is the process. But now, that's a misunderstanding of our church law. They could uh, they could make a due decision on the same evidence, or, or additional evidence could be gathered on the appeal process. Oh, yeah, that happens all the time. It's what they refer to in canon law as a tribunal of second instance. So that the court of second instance could rule on the, the, uh, the whole merit of the case again. I see, and, and reverse their initial findings. Or they, or they could support it. Once a judgment is made and a penalty announced, the guilty has 15 days to file an appeal. Archbishop Aperon announced immediately after the results were published on the Vatican's website that he did file an appeal. But much like the charges filed against Aperon, the appeal documents are not subject to public disclosure. It would be up to the tribunal to make that decision. Meanwhile, Monsignor Easton questioned the penalty against Aperon, noting that removal of office or being banned from Guam is not necessarily the harshest of punishments for a crime like sexual abuse of minors. However, he did point out that the Vatican has handed down similar punishments for priests of old age. Aperon has revealed in recent weeks that he underwent surgery and is in declining health. He was even seen in a wheelchair attending one of Pope Francis's general audiences in Rome. Mm -hmm. But because of the health issue, they did not dismiss him from the clerical state uh, because they felt that he would be out on his own and without any health care or anything else. And um, the, and that isn't kind of what the church does. We don't uh, we don't throw people out. But mm. we don't condone we don't condone crimes either. By allowing Aperon to remain in clerical state, the disgraced bishop will essentially remain on payroll. He'd be eligible to receive um, honorable sustenance. It's kind of like a, pretty much of a minimum mm -hmm. kind of a thing, but honorable. So he's not he's not uh, he's not below the poverty level, but he's not making as much income as he would if he were in, had that office of the Archbishop of Guam. You can read more online at PacificNewsCenter.com.